Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf and weekly download episode number 28, which is my weekly tech and PC gaming news series. Today, I'm going to be playing some Killing Floor 2 while I give you this news, and I'm going to be sipping on a Powerade Zero. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. Before jumping into the gaming news, I want to let you guys know where else you can find me outside of YouTube, which is Instagram and Twitter. My name for both of them is at Zach's Tech Turf, and I recently started recording Instagram stories so you'll be able to find a bunch of behind the scenes content there. Our first set of news is that Resident Evil 7 was released this week and there are speedrunners that already beat the game in two hours. I recently posted a benchmarking video of this game and I'm getting some really great feedback from you guys. A lot of you have been telling me to do a let's play of the game but I absolutely hated it and I'm definitely not into scary games. If you convince me enough, I might just have to do it. The first Battlefield 1 DLC was announced this week. It's called They Shall Not Pass and it releases in March and it's bringing four maps, two vehicles, and one new mode. The new mode is called Frontlines and it pits two teams against each other fighting for one flag at a time. The flag moves after it's captured and there's a few rush style rules to it as well. The new Steam update makes moving your game files between Steam folders super easy now. Before the update, you could move a game installation folder from one hard drive to another, but Steam would have to verify that none of the files got messed up and it took a long time. Now, you can simply go to the properties of a game, hit local files, and select move install folder. It's super easy now, definitely a fan of this update. The PC gaming hardware market hit an all time high in 2016, reaching over $30 billion, which is the first time I'm getting past this milestone. For years people have been saying that PC gaming is dying, but this proves otherwise. An interesting fact I found from this is that according to the analysts at JPR, 43% are buying high-end computers, 35% for mid-range, and only 22% for entry-level computers. This means that the majority of us are in it for the right reasons, IMO. Moving on to tech news, the Galaxy S8 hasn't been officially announced yet, but some pretty solid rumors are coming to light. The screen is expected to stay at 1440p with a Quad HD Super AMOLED display. The two versions of the S8 are expected to be 5.7 inches and 6.2 inches, which exceeds the 5.7 inch Note 7. Apparently all of the devices will include that edge look with a dual curved screen. Samsung has also announced that the S8 will come out a bit later than usual this year. In more smartphone news, a pretty legit looking product shot of the LG G6 has been surfacing and it looks pretty awesome actually. The G6 is removing the modular chin that the G5 had and it's supposed to be rocking a 2 to 1 ratio 5.7 inch quad HD LCD screen and be an all glass design. It is also expected to keep the headphone jack and be waterproof. Android 2.0 is finally almost here as Google released the final version of the 2.0 developer preview. The full release is supposed to happen next month. Android 2.0 is supposed to significantly improve performance of eligible smartwatches and also bring iOS support. HP is recalling even more laptops because of their recent battery recall. Just like the Note 7 last year, yep, still salty, Batteries found in some HP laptops that were released from 2013 to 2016 have been catching fire and melting. HP has declared this week that they are recalling over 100,000 more batteries, and if you bought your HP laptop in the last three years, I would definitely see if your model number is one of these. And finally to wrap up tech news, I announced the other week that Netflix now has an offline viewing for some content and I was pretty excited about it. As of this week, you'll also be able to download them to an SD card on Android obviously. There is a small catch to the Netflix offline viewing that I didn't previously know about. You can't just download everything and store it in a library. Some of the content expires anywhere from 48 hours to a week later. You can always download it again, but it stops you from just piling up a huge library of movies and TV shows. Well that wraps up weekly download episode number 28. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what your favorite tech or PC gaming news was this week or if I missed anything. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zach's Tech Turf for even more content. Well hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.